In chapter 14 of The Intelligent Investor, the father of value investing, Ben Graham, said never pay more than 15 times earnings to buy a stock. In this video, I'm going to show you why that's such sage advice. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool, aka Mr. Valuation. You know, one of the most common questions I receive on this video channel is why do I, you know, stress the 15 PE ratio so much? In a recent video I did on realty income, I had the following comment from Robert Shapiro, who said, and I'm reading it to you, thank you for your content. I recently found your channel and have really enjoyed your videos. Can you please add some context why you feel 15 times price to AFFO, interject price to earnings, is ideal versus, say, 10 or 20 times. How did you arrive at that multiple? And do you access its reasonableness with some frequency? Thank you. Well, in this video, we're going to talk quite a bit about the 15 PE ratio and why it is such a rational valuation reference that you can look at. And I do want to emphasize that it's a valuation reference. So what I'm going to do is go to my fast graph and I'm going to start off by looking at Amdocs. And what I've got here on this graph is a plotting of the company's earnings per share. That's the orange line on that graph. And it's drawn at a PE ratio of 15. You can see that in the fast facts here. So to be clear, everywhere I touch this line, it's a PE ratio of 15. So when I put stock prices on this graph, Every time the price is touching the orange line, it's a PE of 15. When the price is below the orange line, it's less than 15 times earnings. And when the price is above the orange line, then the stock is trading at more than 15 times earnings. And the real point is, this is a valuation reference. Okay, and it's, you know, should be thought of as that. It's an analytical tool. It's a barometer of sorts, if you will, that allows you to evaluate whether or not you know, a stock is trading at a fair valuation or not. In other words, whether you're buying it as a you know defensive investor or not. And, and the chapter four of the intelligent investor, Ben Graham, did a piece on stock selection for the defensive investor. And in there, he said, pay a moderate P.E. ratio. Only choose stocks whose current price is no more than 15 times the average earnings over the past three years, quote unquote. So what Ben was telling us is that a 15 P.E. ratio is kind of a rational valuation reference for you to kind of focus on. But that doesn't mean you should take that to the grave and look at it as something really precise. Valuation is always a range. There's never a perfect thing. But the idea of the FastGraph research tool, we took that 15 P.E. ratio. And you'll see that many of the charts that you would draw in FastGraph utilize that 15 P.E. ratio. And for example, looking at MDOCs here, if I include the weekly closing stock prices on the graph by clicking this button down here, you can see that in reference to this 15 P.E. ratio, the stock has tracked that. There were periods of time when it was trading at P.E. ratios above that, and those were overvalued times. And by the way, those usually led to poor performance in the long run. You know, you can see negative performance as we come into the Great Recession. And anytime the stock is trading below that orange line, it's trading at a P.E. ratio below 15, as you can see by the orange in the pop up here. So here at April 10th, it was trading at 9.49 times earnings. So if I you know, put a dot there and bring it out to here where it's trading at 13.8 times earnings, I would have earned 11.23%. But I want to make something clear here. When I do that, you know, when I'm shortening the time frame here, I'm looking at a time frame where you have growth here of 8.03%. All right, now, if I go to the beginning of the graph here, I could buy this at 11.99 times earnings, and I'll go ahead and put a dot there for it. All right, so now by just simply looking at this graph, I can see now that the price is below the orange line. It's trading at a blended PE of 13.88 but that's higher than the 11.99. So assuming a roughly an 8% growth rate here, by simply looking at this graph and understanding that the PE here was approximately 12, and now it's closer to 14, that I'm going to get 8% growth plus a little PE ratio expansion. And so my growth component of my total return ought to be better than 8%. Now I add in dividends, which is the light green shaded area here, 
and connotated also by the white line, the area below that is the payout ratio, which is what I've stacked on top here. I know that I'm going to get a rate of return that's better than 8% because I've got PE ratio expansion going from 11.99 to 13.88. Okay, so that gives me 8.75% annualized rate of return without dividends or growth. Okay, and that is simply the 8% growth plus the PE increasing from 11.99 to 13.88. Now, I've also got dividend income. In this case, I would have received $4,528 in dividends. That would have kicked my rate of return up to 9.75%. So I'm going to make a couple of comments here now. Number one, valuation indicates soundness. And valuation is all about positioning yourself to fully participate in the operating results that the company generates. You know, we all invest in companies that we admire, whether you're buying Apple or Microsoft or Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, whatever the case may be, we're choosing that company because we believe the prospects in that company look attractive to us and they should be attractive. But if you overpay for those prospects, you're going to do less than what the company delivers. And if you get an opportunity to underpay or buy it when it's below value, you can participate not only fully in what the company produces, and I've said this many times in videos, but you also get some leverage. You get some what I call natural leverage. You get, you know, P-E ratio expansion potential. Okay, but ultimately what valuation is all about is about soundness. It does not necessarily guarantee what rate of return you own, and I'll explain that here in a moment. But I want to go back to this 15 P.E. ratio on this orange line being a valuation reference. How I'm using that is, first of all, I can see during this time frame here that that's been a good valuation reference. Anytime I could buy the stock when it was trading at lower than a 15 P.E., that was an optimum time to buy. If I bought the stock when it was trading above a 15 P.E., like right here, that was a less optimum. My rate of return drops to only 5.66%, including dividends, versus the you know much higher return that I showed when I bought the stock. And here is at 12.6 PE. Here I get a 9.34%, almost double the rate of return. And I'm investing in the same company with very similar growth rates. The difference was valuation. All right, so the 15 PE ratio becomes a valuation reference. I can look at this chart and simply see that anytime I can buy it below 15, I'm making a good investment. If I pay more than 15, then I'm you know, not getting optimal results. It's not an optimum time to buy the stock. But now let's move on to the next company on the list here that I want to talk about. I want to talk about Principal Financial Group. And once again, I'm going to go ahead and take the price off the graph. And I want you to look at the graph. Now, once again, I've got an orange line on the graph of a 15 PE ratio. But I have a much more cyclical picture here. Amdocs was a very consistent growth, if you remember, and almost double the rate of principal. Okay, so principals had some up earnings and down earnings. But this 15 PE ratio still serves as a very rational valuation reference, but it does not necessarily mean that if you pay 15 times earnings, you're going to make money. It simply means you're being sound. So now if I put the weekly closing stock prices on the graph here, we can see that the 15 P.E. ratio worked very well coming into the Great Recession from, you know, looking at the beginning of 2003, coming in towards the end of 2008 when the recession started. We can see that the stock was, you know, trading more or less at a 15 P.E. It was following the earnings line at a 15 P.E. and, again, you know, fluctuating above and right on the graph. But then we came into a period during the recession where we had a negative growth rate in earnings of 9% followed by a negative 25%. So you could have bought the stock here at even a, a you know below a 15 PE ratio, and you'd have actually lost money over the next several years, an average of you know 11% if you held it till December of 2012, you know, roughly a four year period there or so. And the point was, even though you paid a rational PE ratio, that because the earnings went down. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that the P.E. ratio represents intrinsic value, but it also, you know, you have to look forward and see what the earnings are going to do and what growth rate the company is going to achieve if you want to start talking about rate of return. Now, you know, had you bought the stock here at this 14 P.E. and held it in the long run, you would have eked out a small gain on the stock. 
But the reality of it is the 15 PE ratio still becomes a rational valuation reference. But I want you to notice something. Since the Great Recession started, this stock has really never traded very often other than one time here very briefly at a 15 PE ratio. So Fast Graphs gives you a second valuation reference line, and that's the normal PE, which is really the market PE. It's a trimmed average of more or less how the market has typically valued the stock over whatever time frame you're drawing. Okay, now I want you to notice that, you know, as I shorten the time frame here, I'm going to shorten it down to about 18 years where I keep the recession period in here. The 11 multiple of the blue line, the, fifth, the orange line still is a 15 PE, and it did hit 15 PE-ish, you know, more than once over this time frame. But over this period of time, the market has really been valuing this at about 11. But that doesn't, again, that's a reference. That's a valuation reference. Because there were times when it was trading much below 11. And there were times when it was trading at a P.E. ratio higher than 11. Okay, but 11 then became kind of an, an, an optimal number. It's a valuation reference that if you were always paying less than 11 times earnings since the Great Recession, to my principal financial group, you were probably making a rational and a sound decision. Okay, so the 15 PE ratio still serves as a valuation reference line, but in this case, it doesn't have the merit that we saw with Amdocs. Now, let's go into another company and let's look at Target. Okay, let's go back to the max graph. And again, let's take price off the graph. And what we see here is, we'll take the normal PE off as well, we see Target has averaged about 8% growth, 7.94. And we can see that, you know, it was growing here in the recession, it had a down year, then it grew again, it had a down year in 2014. Then it had coming out of COVID, you know, it had some really, really good years, you know, probably online selling, but then the, you know, earnings kind of came back down again after that. And then it began growing again. Now, this is a 15 PE ratio anywhere I touch that orange line. It's a 15 PE ratio here. It's a 15 PE ratio here after the earnings collapse. It's a 15 PE ratio here and a 15 PE ratio here. When I put weekly closing stock prices, once again, I see that relationship between price and earnings. And a 15 PE ratio becomes a very excellent guide. I don't want to pay these high valuations here when the PEs were 23, you know, 22.8, etc., because that's probably going to lead me to a negative or a very poor rate of return, despite the fact that the company had generally good growth during that period of time. But if I bought it at a 15 PE ratio, you know, I would end up with about an eight and a half or nine percent number over the time frame I measured here. The point is, the 15 became a rational period. If I could buy it at a discount of like 10 times earnings and held it here to where it just kind of went back to almost 15 times earnings and I'm making over 14%. This is a tool to think with and it's an analytical tool. Okay, but I want you to understand the valuation is sound when you're buying it at 15, but your rate of return is going to be a function of what growth is achieved after you buy it at that 15 times earnings. Because once again, you could have paid, you know, approximately 15 times earnings to buy Target here, but because earnings collapsed, even with this slight recovery, you'd be losing 18.88% annualized. You know, you'd have lost, you know, more than 60% of your money here. You know, your growth would have been a negative 33.91%, in other words. But the 15 PE ratio was still relevant. You can see the stock was kind of moving towards that 15 PE ratio. Okay, so that, you know, can happen with stocks like that. Now, there are exceptions to this rule, okay? But the exception would be up to about 15% growth. So, for example, if I put Ameriprise on here, Ameriprise Financial, I want you to see that the growth rate here has been 12 and three quarter percent higher than all the others. Okay, when I put weekly closing stock prices, I'm still using a 15 PE ratio here, I want to point out. So when I put weekly closing stock prices, I see a clear, you know, relationship, I call it correlation, between price and earnings. Okay, but there are times it gets disconnected, and those are times you can, you can exploit or take advantage of. When I put the normal PE on here, over this time frame, I see that the market has valued this at around 13 times earnings, which is pretty close to the growth rate. Now, again, as I change time frames, I get different numbers, and I want to use this one as a good example. 
and when you're using the tool, if you're a FastGraph subscriber, make sure you pay attention to this. I've got an anomalous number here. I've got 2,000% growth and then 40 and everything. So if I shorten this time frame, watch how the graph begins to make more sense. If I shorten the time frame, now I've got 16% growth. And as I pointed out, up to 15%, a 15 PE ratio works pretty well. Once you get above 15%, then the famed PE ratio equals growth rate formula that Peter Lynch made famous becomes a valuation reference. And that, in this case, is 16.53. But once again, that's a valuation reference. In reality, in the real market, the market has only applied about a 13 multiple, 12.7 multiple. And so as I'm looking at Ameriprise here, my logical mind simply tells me that I'm better off valuing this stock at around a 13 multiple than I am a 15 or 16 multiple. Okay, and again, that it's dynamic. That's why this is an analytical tool. Things will change as you change the time frame. Now, these numbers change, but a 12.8 multiple is still pretty much in line with what, you know, I showed you here when I was showing you 12.7 with that very, very high growth rate. And then when I shortened the time frame and got rid of that, you know, we had 12.7. I shortened the time frame, I got 12.37. The ish number is still relevant here, okay? But the 15 PE ratio still has, you know, some rational value for you as an investor. Now, if you look at a stock like Meta, a very fast growing stock, which has grown earnings by 24% over this time frame, since it's above 15%, we're using P equals growth rate. But again, that becomes a pretty good valuation reference. Here, my orange line is a PE of 24.26 or equal to the growth rate. Okay, and again, that becomes a good reference. I know that if I can buy the stock below that historically, I'd have done pretty well. But that doesn't mean I'd have done well in all periods because here when we had, you know, a negative earnings growth, I would have actually lost money. Okay, but if I'd have held on to the stock by buying it at a rational valuation relevant to its growth rate, here I would have made 21%. So, you know, the rate of return is going to be a function of the growth that's achieved after you buy the stock at a rational valuation. The rational valuation, the PE ratio of 15, is really nothing more than a valuation reference. It's a you know reference that says, this would be a PE ratio you want to pay. But there are exceptions to every rule. If I look at Echo Labs, for example, if I draw you know a graph here on Echo Labs, then I discover that the market has always applied a high valuation. So it's a 9% grower, A-rated company with 46% debt. If I go back and look at Amdocs, okay, it is a 10% grower with lower debt, a little bit slightly lower credit rating, but the market here has always applied a 15 PE ratio. I don't argue with the market. I'm simply pointing out that I'm evaluating what I'm seeing on the fast graphs here. And when I look at Echo Labs, I know that if I want to own this stock, I've got to pay a premium valuation. You'll see many other names like that. You know, there are always exceptions to every rule. If I look at automatic data processing, I see another 9 or 10% grower, you know, growing between 9 and 10%, that the market values at a very high premium. Okay, it has. So if I'm buying this stock, you know, I would have had an opportunity to buy it at 15 times earnings during the Great Recession and maybe just at a slight premium, you know, in September of 2010, and I'd have certainly made money. That, those would have been a good time because it was below the blue line. But again, I have to make the decision as an investor whether or not I'd want to pay that or not, whether I'd want to buy the stock at the blue line or not. Now, the 15 PE ratio is a valuation reference. I want to emphasize that again. When you're looking at, you know, many, many stocks, you know, if I look at a stock like Johnson & Johnson, and I've got the 15 PE ratio, I got a 7% grower. You can see how 15 became a good time to buy the stock and anything below 15 was optimal. Okay, even Johnson & Johnson. If I buy it at 15, I position myself, fully participate in the growth of the company. Here's a 15.9, let me try to find something. There's 15.01. Okay, that's almost identical to the 15.02 it currently trades at. And I've got about seven or so percent growth here. So when I analyze this, well, if I take some time off of this graph, I would have probably had slightly less than 7%, but I would get 5.71. In other words, I'm fully participating in what the company delivered here. 
That's the point I want to make. Now, on fast graphs, you can go up here into the learning center, which is this little question mark here, and you can go into the learning center from there. And on the learning center, you can go into research articles. And, and I did, you know, articles on the 15 PE ratio. And so if you search for a 15 PE, then I get these articles. Now you can see that I, a couple of times, I wrote why a 15 PE ratio is fair value for most companies. This is um, the article that I wrote in 2019. It was an update of an article I wrote in 2018. This was written in August of 2019, about a year later. If you go to the article, okay, you will see examples that I've used, which are very similar to what I've used in the video today. All right, and you can go on and actually look at the video, and we're going to put the link to this video, or you can go, you know, to the Learning Center and find it. And it'd be kind of interesting to watch that video in conjunction with this video, because the bottom line is that, you know, a 15 PE ratio is a rational number. I give explanations in this article, for those of you who would like to go there, of why it's relevant. And I talk about the fact that that's the average, you know, rate of return for the stock market over 200 years. I talk about how the fact that the inverse of a 15 PE ratio is a 6.67% earnings yield. And so I get into some, you know, evidence, but the real proof is in the pudding. And that's when you go to a fast graph and you draw stocks and see the 15 PE valuation reference line drawn, then you can use that as a benchmark, if you will, to kind of decide whether or not it makes sense to invest in whatever stock you're looking at by simply, you know, focusing on this idea that a 15 PE ratio is a rational valuation metric. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer Software Tool. Thank you for watching this video. This is the most common question, or one of the most common questions I get. Why do I use a PE ratio of 15? I hope this video clarifies some of the logic behind the relevance and the significance of, of a fair value earnings yield of 6.67% or PE ratio of 15. If you enjoyed this video, then give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and take a look at subscribing to Fast Graphs. It's really a great tool that can help you make smarter, long-term investment decisions with your eyes wide open. It helps you assess the risk you're taking to buy a stock at a given valuation, and it also gives you the ability to analyze how well the company's performed in the history, because Ben Graham also talked about that. Although it's no guarantee of the future, knowing something about the historical background of a company, which FastGraphs does superbly, is really a great benefit. Thanks for watching. Talk to you again real soon.